This is the Penguin Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about the Penguin, episode four, Chintani. I know you're all anxious for me to leave. <laughs> no one has been shy about that. I'd really hoped that it would be different. But I understand. I don't fit into this family anymore. So tomorrow I am starting a new life. For the first time, I have hope. To new beginnings. Chantani. Welcome back, fellow Gothamites. This is the Penguin Podcast. We're talking about the Penguin Episode 4, Chintani. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Gothamites. Great to be back in the Batverse mm-hmm. with this fourth episode of the Penguin, Sant Annie. Sent Annie? Mm-hmm. Sent. Little Annie, I guess. Uh, I am one of your other hosts, John. No, it means a hundred years, John. Yes, hundred years Italian. Uh, in Italian. But my Italian is terrible, so I can't get the pronunciation right. Yeah, I think I've got. I think I've gone French when I'm saying it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is it. Yeah. Yeah, but this is an excellent episode. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it because uh, it is a, a very special episode, uh, yeah. very focused on Sophia Falcone uh, for a show called The Penguin. Uh, having an episode focused on Victor last week and an episode focused on Sophia this week with very little appearance by Oz uh, in the present day anyway. Um, it's yeah. kind of interesting, but there are connections and there are reasons why. Oh, absolutely, has, absolutely. Yeah. But it's really, really good, actually. Yeah. Um, because I think it's one of those things where it's it's almost a proper flashback mm-hmm. as it should be used yeah. to some degree. Um, it, you know, it informs the story. I, I know literally every flashback does, but it's <laughs> yeah. also used quite sort of um, frequently. Yeah. Um, it's a good shorthand, but in this case, I like the longer shorthand that it provides I effectively. You. I get you. Yeah. Um, and I like that it sort of meshes in with the past and the present, you know, of of this timeline. And I, I'm, I'm here for episodes covering some of the supporting characters mm-hmm. or equally the same billing ca- character yeah. as the Penguin, which I think Sophia Falcone is here. Um, yeah. like it is um, Sophia and Oz that ultimately after this episode are going to be going head to head mm-hmm. um, you know yeah. and like with last week's episode with Victor where it was effectively looking at I guess the person who is to become his main ally in mm-hmm. Victor here we're looking at the person who will become uh, his biggest uh, rival. Exactly. So really, really good. Yeah, exactly. Ex- excellent stuff. Um, let's get into some feedback on last week's episode. As usual with our Penguin podcast, we start out with feedback on last week's episode. Um, we're going to kick off with some feedback on email from Meryl Smith on episode three. She says, really loved the spotlight in Victor's character this time, and I especially enjoy getting a different view of the incident from the Batman. It's also great seeing more actors appear in the show, although it did force me onto IMDb longer than I normally am to get the full Rolodex of things that they are in and view them later while at the same time memorizing their names so if they appear in something later down the line that i end up checking out i can note to look forward to seeing them in that project something that i meant to mention in my episode two discussion with this being a low-key sequel to the batman it's interesting that we're getting a, a similarity from it a falcone daughter with issues with her father attempts to strike out and make a name for herself shame there isn't a cameo or reference to selena kyle yet i see a possible avenue in which that could happen but i guess that can wait also something from gotham that i've always thought about was that they never connected that thread from the comics in season four. It does kind of slow my mind occasionally that Selina is a Falcone. Imagine they have told that story in Gotham. That could have made Selina's character journey even richer. Also, a bit of irony is that by the end of that season, all of them had been shot by someone. 
That family is cursed, even Mario, although no Alberto in that series. Emergency Awesome, a YouTuber, mentioned how what Oz is doing when he's improvising is essentially spinning plates in the air, paraphrasing, and I kind of agree with that sentiment. Also, this makes the third time in three weeks that Oz has threatened Victor's life. The most important question to ask now, will there be a fourth time? I think the leaving of Sophia will be another case of him plate spinning and he'll find a way to make that not seem like he betrayed her, while at the same time he knows they won't kill her outright, which will give him time to get out of this situation alive. Another thing is that Intel Information and Leverage is the name of the game, so they most likely want to extract that information through torture, of course, but maybe Sophia will turn the tables on them. She's pretty crafty. 3.5 bus tickets out of 10 that you're clearly not getting a refund for out of 5 for that episode for me. Thanks, Meryl, for your thoughts. Now, obviously, we have seen episode 4 now, so we know uh, things are still kind of up in the air with Oz, and he didn't get out of the situation with uh, with Sophia. We kind of will talk about that when we go into this episode as such. But uh, yeah, it looks like as of right now, Sophia believes that Oz is the one that killed her brother. So I don't know whether there is any coming back from that now. Yeah, thanks, Meryl, for the feedback. Um, I think for sure um, Oz is now pitted against uh, Sophia. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's the plate on on for sophia has done its last rotation mm-hmm. and has fallen off uh, off the stick you know yeah. um but i do think now that's where the series will go mm-hmm. we'll be seeing how these two i guess play dodgeball with one another to some extent mm-hmm. um because it'll be interesting certainly given what's happened in episode 4 like Whilst the hierarchy has been taken out, there's still the infrastructure of the Falcone family uh, and its business Mm. that that ultimately uh, Sophia has the authority to use. Well, yes. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I think to your uh, points around Selena's character, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they're really good and it might not be something that um, sort of appears uh, here. And I guess ultimately it depends how um, Matt Reeves wants to take the Batman Mm -hmm. um, property uh, through TV. It'll be interesting whether Selina shows up in any way Mm -hmm. in in this series. Um, I think ultimately it'll depend on Matt Reeves and how he wants to sort of weave uh, Mm. selena kyle as a character throughout uh, what he's doing on tv and in in the films but you're right it is kind of a shame that um that aspect wasn't teased out in in the gotham show um but then as i say there was no alberto but there was a mario Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, yes the falcons were very cursed they um, certainly were throughout all of i think the batman properties yeah it's all it always kind of starts out with the uh with the mafia type families in gotham and then eventually turns into the supervillains so they will always go out uh, at some point um but an interesting point i do wonder if they're going to keep that selena kyle appearance until batman 2 that she comes in and meets up with sophia if, if sophia survives the penguin tv yeah. show of course uh, maybe we'll see her in the batman uh, meeting up with her long lost sister um great stuff thanks so much for that meryl yeah thanks so much meryl coffee and vodka emailed on episode three as well saying greetings fellow blissful defenders this show in its few episodes has skirted the neighborhood of the leftovers more than a bit Mm. for someone like me who feels the same way about drama that derek does about humor the constant tension that it might move into that territory does put a bit of a dampener on things saying this the this episode did successfully set up and resolve victor's loyalty issues Mm -hmm. and just in time with oz's spot blown up potentially unfixably so speaking of timeliness i ironically love the instantly blown premise of trust from pengi to sophia Mm -hmm. i can totally get behind her attitude and understand her motivation hangman or not she's got every right to see him swing The good news is, depending on how blown up his spot becomes, he and everyone he knows are now living targets, leaving time for only instinctual action without any more leftovers. However, I might feel this episode's tight craftsmanship of writing and direction is an undeniable Emmy bid. Mm -hmm. Three post-the-Riddler stress disorders, (laughs) bagfuls of bliss and wasted pizzas, out of five, peace and take care, coffee and vodka.
excellent stuff, coffee and vodka. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the feedback. Good to know that you have uh, a similar view uh, on drama as uh, Derek does on, on humor. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, my, my view on humor is that it's kind of pointless, that it's just there for a laugh. Once you've laughed, it's done. I prefer drama because there's more depth to it. A lot of the time. I do laugh at things. Yeah, I you promise. do like humor. <laughs> yes, you like comedy. I it's do. the wrong humor that you don't like. That's true. Yeah, anything that doesn't make me laugh, I don't like. <laughs> yeah, bad drama, I also don't like as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's, yeah. And specifically the humor, maybe that was overly laced through the Thor movies uh, yeah, yeah. towards the end. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, those are my least favorite Marvel movies uh, <laughs> without doubt. And I, I I definitely add the sequel to Shazam to that as another uh, movie full of humor <laughs> yeah. that I didn't laugh once at. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but thanks so much for that coffee and vodka. Uh, some interesting thoughts and again, uh, leading into where we are in the, in the fourth episode. Uh, we also got a message over on our Facebook group from Becky Fenner Anderson, who says, really nice flashback into Victor's family and his view of what happened the, the night the bombs went off. The chemistry between Oz and Victor is perfect. I love how Oz, in his own way, is a father figure to the kid, teaching him how to value himself, how proud Vic was to tell Oz about his encounter with the cop and how proud Oz was of how he handled it. Oz not speaking for Vic and, or letting the waiter do it, telling him to take his time with it. Oh, I love them together. Asking about his family, giving him a chance to talk about his life, the toast to his dad and how they raised a good son and how his dad would be proud of him. Also, very cool operation Sophia has going. I'm glad Victor got a chance to see his girlfriend. Her comment about the school being underwater and being tired of living in a FEMA camp hits harder right now, given what's going on after the hurricanes hit in the US. I did laugh at him rushing to put her drink on the coaster. That was hilarious. Once again, a man is talking down to Sophia. Johnny Vitti is a dick. He literally threatened to kill her. I like how she took a moment to breathe before she responded. I cannot imagine the strength it is taking her not to go off brilliant setting Johnny up, forcing him to vouch for their plan. She said Oz is working for him. Penguin giving just a hint with the look of his face that he do doesn't like that. How she keeps control, constantly reminding him he works for her. Can't wait to see his climb to the top. Sophia just sitting there while Johnny gets attacked. So calm and casual. Again, amazing acting. The way she speaks with such confidence, putting on a persona that she is strong. Oz owning that he doesn't regret what he got for what he did to Sophia. Also, that scene of Victor suffering PTSD was heartbreaking. Oz looked so offended and hurt that Vic wants to leave. The truth coming out of Victor having mixed feelings on what he's doing and feeling it's wrong. Oz laying out the harsh truths about the world they live in. The song playing during these final scenes was absolutely perfect. Some incredible acting from each character. I like how they work together, but how each one shines on their own, especially Victor. How Sophia and Oz read each other and react is brilliant too my favourite quotes from the episode Penguin to Vic you're getting your forehead grease all over my window kid <laughs> and Penguin also to Vic when he leaves him alone in the apartment do anything stupid and I'll sense it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely really love good quotes. the quotes you've picked out there Becky for sure I think uh, the last one I had uh, I think I mentioned on the podcast last yeah. week I really liked it yeah yeah, excellent stuff. Uh, and yeah, the, just such great moments in the episode. Again, the arc of what Victor is going through and the guidance he's getting from Oz and how betrayed Oz feels the fact that Victor might actually leave the city. Yeah, absolutely. And also that he thought he was being held under gunpoint as well. He was like a prisoner there. Yeah. And Oz is offended by both things. <laughs> absolutely. And yeah. I think that speaks, though, Becky, as well, to your point that the chemistry between these two on screen mm -hmm. is just really, really good. It is. Um, yeah. It just works perfectly uh, and like you say there is that element of um that father figure in oz and the way he treats vic mm -hmm. uh but yeah i just think their chemistry is fantastic yeah definitely agree thanks so much for all the feedback on last week's episode we have a little bit of feedback on this week's episode later on but if you want to get in any thoughts on this week's episode you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tv podcast industries where we have a spoiler post up for each episode of the penguin and all the other shows that we're covering as well Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we are also covering at the moment Agatha all along, mm -hmm. and we have just finished The Rings of Power okay. as well. So if you want to catch any of our thoughts um, on those two shows as well, please head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com, as Derek has rightly uh, pointed out mm -hmm. there. Uh, but I think it's time to get into our spoiler-filled discussion of The Penguin, Episode 4, Sent Annie. 
Derek, what are some of the episode details? Yes, the show is based on characters created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane for Detective Comics, spinning out of Matt Reeves' The Batman and under showrunner Lauren LaFranc. This episode was written by John McCutcheon, who previously wrote Season 2, Episode 3 of The Wheel of Time, John. Excellent stuff. Uh, which we cover also yep. on TV Podcast Industries. A uh, really good second season of, uh, of Wheel of Time. Oh, it? really good, yeah. yeah. I love both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this episode was directed by Helen Shaver. Uh, she's been acting since the 70s and directed many shows, including one of our favourites, Lovecraft Country. Oh, really good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely show, recommend that without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, yeah, definitely. A good, a good drama, good horror in there. Yeah, really good story as yeah. well. So uh, very good to see Helen Shaver moving over here to The Penguin. Uh, John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for episode four of The Penguin? Sure. Under the gunpoint of Nadia Moroni and her men, Oz Cobb pleads for his life, explaining that he was only working with Sophia Falcone to get access to her drug business. But Nadia doesn't believe him and reveals to Sophia that Oz is the murderer of her brother Alberto. As Victor arrives and saves Oz, Sophia calls Dr. Julian Rush to help her. Sophia recalls the events that led to her time in Arkham State Hospital. Ten years ago, after being approached by Summer Gleason from the Gotham Gazette, Sophia realised her father, Carmine Falcone, could be behind her mother's death and six other women connected to his business. But Sophia tells the reporter she's investigating the wrong man and leaves the meeting. But when Oz Cobb, her driver at the time, reports the meeting to Carmine, Sophia is brought before the family leader. She tries to have a conversation with her father so he can clear her mind of suspicion, but Carmine sends her home with Oz. On the way home, the GCPD arrests Sophia for the murder of the Gotham Gazette reporter and all the other women. Due to written letters from her father and most of her leading family members, Sophia is committed to Arkham State Hospital for a six-month evaluation ahead of her trial. Under the watchful eye of Dr. Vantress and his assistant, Dr. Julian Rush, a brutal incarceration follows, with Sophia being subjected to a violent beating by another inmate that results in her receiving daily electroshock therapy. After six months, her brother Alberto tells Sophia that Dr. Vantress has deemed her unfit for trial and she is to remain in Arkham State Hospital. In the present day, now free, Sophia discusses her predicament with Dr. Rush, who convinces her she needs a break. She returns to the Falcone family home, and surrounded by all the heads of the family, she calls them out for their part in her incarceration. She announces her plans to start a new life, as she doesn't fit into the family anymore. Late that night, Sophia enacts her plan, using a gas to suffocate all the members of her family apart from her most hated rival, Johnny Vitti. She holds him at gunpoint while they discuss her next steps. Another great cliffhanger to close out an episode of The Penguin after an excellent one last week and a brilliant closing to the episode as well. Oh, absolutely. This was so good, this uh-huh. episode. Um, I love getting... Uh, the the backstory for this character, yep. you know, in this version of, of Gotham, and, and uh, it was just really, really good. And I did think there was a nice little mix of, you know, that kind of serious Batman that you get here, just with a little hint of um, Batman 66 and, um, I guess, Gotham yeah, uh, as well, with the method of killing uh-huh. her family. Yeah. Um, it seems very elaborate. It does. But, alas, effective. Absolutely. As long as you close the windows. Yeah, and I, I think this is the thing. It's it's a version of these characters from Gotham, these comic book characters, and how they could have gotten to the point where they do something as insane as this <laughs> by the end of the episode. So we're not going to start with the end, though. We are going to present our case file for this episode with our top five case notes. And our case note number one is the beginning of the episode because it actually jumps backwards from last week's cliffhanger. So we actually hear the conversation that's going on uh, between Nadia Moroni and Oz and um, Sophia Falcone before Victor arrives, effectively. So um, 
what I really like about this is that it leaves you in no doubt what's actually happened and why Oz got to the point when he did get into the car to go, okay, just leave Sophia, but we're really in it now as he leaves Victor because he really is. Wow, how quickly does he throw Sophia under the bus there? Uh, the minute Nadia arrives, the, he's apologizing. He's going, no, 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 you got it all wrong. I was just trying to steal all of her drugs and her drug business and give them to the Maronis. Um, I'm, on, I'm still on your side. Give me just five more minutes and, and this will all turn around and uh, and Sophia will be uh, taken out, basically. You know? Yeah, I mean... It is Sophia being thrown onto the bus, yeah. but it's it's not. It is and it isn't in the sense that it's Oz Cobb trying to save his own skin. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And by virtue of that, he is not talking about her much at all. She's almost like a passenger, and I think that's I what's think he really even tells her to shut up. Yeah, yeah, I think, and I think that's what's really good because she's trying to compute everything that's been said uh-huh. in this really hyper stressful uh tense uh situation where effectively the wife of the head of the rival criminal cartel mm-hmm. in gotham and her son and members of her um cartel have got guns pointed at um sophia falcone yeah so it's hugely stressful but she's also trying to process everything that's kind of being said and to some extent you can see in her eyes or at least that's the way it looked to me like Sophia's world absolutely collapsing absolutely yep um, and yep. as she hears all this information that while she didn't know she may have really strongly suspected um you know as Nadia lets it out that Oz has killed her brother Alberto mm-hmm. that he's been working Um, with the Moroni family, but that he's shown so much disrespect um, to the Moroni family. And I like that Nadia, you know, again, a bit like Sophia, she's always had the suspicion, except Nadia, in a sense, did something about it. Sophia decided to keep the trust, like that Oz managed to say enough each time Mm -hmm. Or things changed in a way that effectively, you know, took her off the scent that she didn't ever follow up that suspicion. With Nadia, she always had him follows. You know, she goes, I knew you were a swindler and a cheat yeah. from the first moment in Blackgate Prison. And I think, you know, um, then again, you just see Sophia processing, you know, how... Oz is saying, I needed to get close to Sophia so we could get the new drug. It's always been for you to help with the Moroni business. Yeah. And I love how this world collapses, really, yeah. for for Sophia um, as Victor comes then roaring in mm-hmm. and she's able to sort of get out of harm's way. Yeah, and just make the phone call so she can get picked up by uh, by Dr. Rush. Yeah. Um it does throw the question in your head, and it's it's probably going to be always a question with Oz Cobb, though, as to which truth is he really telling? Um, are those just two options on the table? If everything had gone well with Sophia, would he stayed in business with Sophia? Or is the truth that actually he was setting up the business and then going to allow the Moronis to come in and take it? Because I feel like he had switched sides. He's pretty angry about what the Fal- Falcones did to him. The person that he was side by side with, Carmine, turned on him and is, is now dead and the rest of the family wants him out of the business so i do think that if they let him play the game for a little bit longer with sophia that he actually would have handed it over to moroni's or at least would have set himself up as head connected to the moroni's rather than the falcons in a few days time i think there's a conversation with victor that he had in the last episode saying we only have a few more turns to go and then we're sorted kid kind of thing so yeah exactly and i felt throughout last week's episode with sophia that she was pushing him out of the partnership very much saying they're here to meet me not my driver kind of thing so um so i do think what he actually says to nadia when he's on his knees is truthful it's what his real plan was and he was revealing that to sophia but it's hard to tell because he tells so many different versions of the plan to different people right yeah but i i think ultimately sophia was always going to be double crossed here probably that that to me is a truth i whether it's the truth that he would be um, loyal to the Maronis. I think with 
Oz, it's stepping stones uh-huh. to yep. the ultimate choice, which is he is the new Carmine. So I, I think it's about, you're right, which is the truth, which is the light. It only becomes the truth once it becomes the best option for moving forward. Yeah. Um, and to consolidate his position and his True. power and to get closer to that power. So these were these were the two options of forwarding Oz to eventually become king of Gotham. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, he, I mean, and he tried both of them in the same night. <laughs> even in you know this episode, Oz really you know in the present day mm-hmm. isn't in in this episode at all. Yes, yeah. he's there in the flashback. Yeah. But you don't know how he is responding to this problem that's happened. Exactly. Because in a sense, and maybe he doesn't even know. There's Nadia and Sophia now that know the truth about him, that Mm -hmm. he will double-cross them. Yeah. But at the same time, he's had a huge run of good fortune Mm. in that the majority of the hierarchy of the Falcone family has been taken out as well. So, you know, without him having to do anything. So, you know, it's partly responding... It's partly planned. It's partly, you know, spinning plates uh, as, uh, as the feedback. Yeah, said. yeah. lobbing, <laughs> lobbing the chaos grenade. In, uh-huh. You know, yeah. and it is. It's spinning plates. Yeah. It's the flexibility, like he advised uh, to to Victor in the last episode. Yeah. And we did see a tiny bit of his reaction. Uh, which was the last line of last week's episode of him laughing, going, we're really in it now, kid, where he's kind of going, I have thrown everything in the air. There's two people now that know the truth of what's happening and we're getting out of here in the car. I've killed a member of the Moroni family, as in Victor crashing in and killing one of the gunmen, and uh, I've killed Sophia's brother. So everybody's gunning for me right now. We're really in it now. That's kind of is his reaction after this, but we'll see next week what his reaction to uh, the events of this episode are, yeah, I'd say. Um, Let's go on to our case note number two, because this does lead into Sophia's flashback, which is our second case note the flashback to what she saw as a child and how she ended off arriving in arkham state hospital um initially we we see her as a young kid and see her at that moment that her mother is found hanged she's the one that finds her mother and carmine falcone comes in to yeah um to find her there and and calm her down but there are a couple of things that she notices are a bit odd about that moment which kind of play into the the later revelations in the episode yeah absolutely i mean i i think sophia's flashback just talks to the complexity of the dynamics of a family but also a crime family uh, in particular and also mm-hmm. a crime family with a father at the hairs who is also um sort of quite keen on killing yes. um so i really really enjoyed this because you on the one hand have carmine and sophia talking about the future that you know carmine believes that alberto is too soft mm-hmm. he parties too much he drinks too much um, and actually he wants sophia to run this family and you know the yeah. rest of the family will accept that because they will know who you are. Uh-huh. Um, but at the same time, she's not being allowed to access that part of the business mm. um, that Carmine does. It is about sort of doing charitable work and campaigning work to support women who um, have mental health issues because mm-hmm. of what, like you say, she saw. Um, as a kid yeah. with her mum, Isabella Falcone, who took her own life, or so we believe, at least initially. Yeah. You realise that despite this campaigning and so on, it's kind of the, the, the things that are pieced together again. And partly it's it's been brought on by the reporter from the Gotham Gazette approaching her at, at one of the charitable mm-hmm. events to Sarah ask Gleason her in live action. Yeah. So Gleason yeah. to ask her, you know, about th- this kind of series of women who have been found, uh, hanged. Um, and they all work for Carmine Falcone's businesses, primarily the iceberg land mm-hmm. or the club beneath the club within a club. Yes. Um, and, They've been found dead, hanged, but then when Sophia gets to meet Summer Gleason again, um, there's pictures there, and you get then the flashbacks within the flashback of her seeing her mum's fingernails, these kind of defensive wounds on her hands, Mm -hmm. 
and you know some of Gleason is saying yes they were hanged mm-hmm. but they had strangle strangulation marks around the neck that were consistent with being throttled yeah. um, and yes they had these defensive wounds trying to keep someone off them i murdered the mm-hmm. hangman this is where the hangman comes from and it, i love how just the creeping sort of um suspicion that she doesn't want to believe yeah and um, that somehow her father at least knows more than what he was letting on that it it well, didn't yeah. it wasn't all suicide effectively as it was being um told to yeah. her by Carmine yeah and this ties directly into the batman uh, story and the story of selena kyle investigating the disappearance of her housemate right um yeah you know that's the whole thing it connected all the way back to her, her father carmine falcone so it's a similar story the the daughter of carmine falcone learning how bad he really is i suppose um but i think what adds to it in this episode you know we've seen how the family looks at sophia from the beginning of the season when she arrived back from from arkham they're all treating her like she's nothing and she shouldn't be any part of the family and it's so interesting seeing how far she's fallen because she does have that conversation with her father where he's saying you'll take on the business you'll be the one that will be sitting in my chair when the time comes i don't want alberto to take it over and because of what happens here she's completely on the outs and now everybody's looking down at her as if she couldn't possibly know anything about the family business you know i I think that's interesting how far she's fallen from that really trusted position of being the smartest one in the room and the possible future leader of the falcon family to you get nothing and all because oz basically rats her out so while we've said this is a sophia episode it absolutely is but this is also all driven by Oz. Um, Oz is her driver. He's employed by Carmine and does say that, really, that the reason why he is her driver and the reason he's doing the job is not just to drive her around. It's also to report everything about what she's doing to Carmine in case there's anything that could impact their business. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he sees... Sophia with uh, Summer Gleason, um, even though she says, you know, you've got it all wrong yeah. and, and kind of rejects the, the reporter's um, assertions. But, he, but he could even threatens her, says, yeah. you know, if you come after my family, my family will go after you, basically. Um, and, but, but I mean, yeah. equally, you know, she does ask Carmine about her mother as well mm-hmm. and says, I don't remember her sick or depressed. Mm-hmm. You know, he's kind of picking at wounds here. She's she's inquiring and you see again Oz listening in on the conversation where she asks Alberto about their dad and the work versus family life. You mm-hmm. know, what is it that he does effectively um, and she wonders if she really knows her own father Mm -hmm. but ultimately yes despite her saying and pleading to oswald um if you were concerned about me you should have come to me not to my father because this all comes out in the wash at carmine's um birthday Mm -hmm. uh, as he speaks to sophia about chatting with the reporter um and it all kind of escalates from there, really, because mm-hmm. you then have her asking if her dad had killed her mom effectively. Indirectly, but it is in effect. Yeah. You need to sort of soothe my suspicions here. She's trying to play the game, yeah. though. She's trying to say to him, I'm sure you have an explanation. And if you could just give me the explanation that you would give anyway for those scratches that were on your hands the day my mom died, then everything's fine. You know, I didn't talk to the press. In fact, I told them to go to go away and leave the family alone. But if you could just clarify that one thing that's in my mind, then we'll be fine. And she's sent away by him. Carmine yeah. dismisses her firstly for bringing up these old wounds and then saying, I don't want to cause a scene in front of the family, sends her off with Oz Cobb, and we get another appearance by the famous GCPD once again yeah, yeah, yeah. on the payroll of Carmine Falcone, who arrests her for the murder of Summer Gleason. That is the first murder that they pin on her. So the reporter that brought all this information to Sophia just a few hours beforehand is dead, and Sophia is the one that's being accused of her of her murder, and then connecting to all the other crimes, all the other deaths uh, that summer had brought to her yeah exactly yeah, so, um, it's, so it's basically going all the way back that she is 
the hangman. She is the one that has killed all of these women. I think the real brutal thing here, and it, it's to the point that was mentioned by Oz in episode three, which is, you know, I didn't know how far they would take it mm -hmm. where they effectively destroy you. And what you have here is the destruction and degradation absolutely and comprehensively absolutely, yeah. of Sophia yeah. Falcone um, from um, being arrested like moments after she's been asked to leave the party by um, her her father, who who you know has has said, "How could you do this to me? I thought you knew better. You know, you're saying I'm a murderer here because there's this open investigation into these women's murders, yeah. um, you know, bringing up about a mom. But it's it's just then the pieces that fall into place here. I mean, even you see. When it's um, Sophia and Alberto at the at GCPD headquarters, and they've got her um, her lawyer, mm -hmm. even though it's her lawyer, she's kind of saying, "Well, you know, you're going to have to be, you're effectively being put into Arkham for the six months before trial mm -hmm. because um, all." the main people in the family, including your father, have said you've got a history of mental illness mm -hmm. um, and they're concerned about you. So yeah. it's so, absolutely kind of cutting the tie here yes. um, completely yeah. for the whole of the family, not just her father, mm -hmm. but her cousins um, and her uncles and aunties. Yeah. You know, they're all wading into the plan that Carmine has set in train. And um, it's really interesting, again, looking back in the first couple of episodes, there's a moment when she meets up with Carla Vesey, who's her cousin in the second episode, I think it is, and she introduces her to Mia. And she's really cold with her. Yeah. And we see Carla talking to Sophia before she gets brought over to Arkham, and the two of them do seem like best friends, you know? Um, so now you can see that in retrospect, that scene with the two of them when Carla's saying to her, oh, we should go away on a girl's holiday together. And you could see why Sophia is looking at her going, hang on a second, so you're one of the people that wrote a letter saying, I was mentally unwell and had me in Arkham for 10 years, yet you want to go on a girl's holiday away, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can really see why this builds up into a a real betrayal in the mind of Sophia. Because I, I don't know whether you remember the movie, John, um, The Changeling, which had Angelina Jolie in it, where she was accused of a crime that she didn't commit and she was put into a mental institution saying that she was crazy and she was stripped of everything and was convinced that she had done something wrong, that she'd committed a murder. It's kind of like what's happening yeah. here with Sophia. The fact that she gets literally stripped of her cocktail dress from her father's birthday party in this mansion in Gotham, all the way down to living in this horrible cell in the worst place in, imaginable in Gotham for just having a conversation with her father in her mind. She didn't do anything wrong here. She well, had a conversation it. and asked her father just to explain and bring her in. He was willing to give his entire business over to her. The two of them had a very good relationship before this, it would seem. But, well, that's it. Yeah. The whole thing has been pinned on Sophia uh -huh. through a combination of lies from Carmine and um, his family, but yeah. it's also working the um, law enforcement and judiciary mm -hmm. uh, system uh, that and um, penitentiary system that effectively Sophia gets processed her. And, she, and, you know, you see her freaking out absolutely about the idea that she uh, and the prospect of being in Arkham for six months. Mm -hmm. um, and I do kind of like that... Um, it is Alberto, just briefly, only briefly in this episode, that kind of keeps that glimmer of hope that she will be able to survive it. It's the only one of the family that is there with her and yeah. trying to be supportive and that she would be able to survive this initial period uh, in Arkham. But I think moving on to case note number three, which mm -hmm. is life in Arkham, because... The whole thing, the whole um, experience is utterly brutal and dehumanizing. I mean, whether it's from the start where you see, where you see her, as you say, being sort of stripped of her clothes, mm -hmm. limed, showered, washed, prodded, you name it. Yeah. Um, 
She's being roughed up, violated, and effectively being gamed against. Um, you know, it, it, the whole thing is being gamed against her by Dr. Ventress and at least in part, you could say, Dr. Julian Rush here. A little bit, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He is effectively taking the lead from Dr. Ventress. Yes. But the whole situation is is being gamed against her. But that's and the interesting thing, isn't it? You know, there's, the, there's that old saying about, you know, just because you believe that everybody is, is out to get you doesn't mean you're paranoid if they're actually out to get you. So... I love how this is filmed and how these scenes are all put together over yeah. the course of the years that she spends, or at least the six months that we see her. Because you are wondering, hang on a second, why is the inmate next door talking to her instantly from the second she arrives? Magpie, as we know, yeah. um, that's a DC character. Well, it did appear in the fifth season of Gotham. Uh, so really good to see another version of Magpie on screen. Um, but you are wondering why she's talking immediately and why she's trying to befriend Sophia so much because that's what Sophia's thinking hang on a second I said one word and I got put in here and all my family turned on me so what's to say Carmine doesn't have plants in here and then we have at lunchtime there's an inmate that's that's unlocked and able to come up and attack and brutally beat yeah. Sophia in the middle of the lunchroom surrounded by prisoners and prison guards so surely she's thinking hang on a second did my father send somebody in here to kill me you know, well, that's saying she's been goaded uh, in, you know, in the prison, even with Doctor Rush, and that's the thing that that's the interesting kind of like complication mm -hmm. here because you know she does say um, you're twisting my words because there's a moment where he is seeing her in her cell. Yes. She goes, you know, I'm innocent. She talks about the inmate who was unchained mm -hmm. and free, and. He he he's kind of just simply says, "Well, they're investigating why that was the case." Yeah, she's she's convinced this is all planned because it's to get the reaction. You know, you're. She says, "You're twisting my words. I see what you're doing." Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, then it's taken the next stage where you have a fork being given to Sophia, um, and then being put. Uh, in the mess hall with this this woman again, this mm -hmm. female inmate, with all the um, officers uh, and uh, guards around them, mm -hmm. and in the end, it's the inmate takes the the, the fork off Sophia, yeah. and repeatedly then stabs herself with the fork and effectively killing herself and but while repeating make it stop make it stop yeah. they're trying to get sophia to kill her it's it, it, that's the interesting part about it it's it's you're wondering whether it is what sophia thinks it is which is carmine has sent her to this prison and hoping that she'll be killed in there so the whole truth of what actually happened of him being the hangman killing all these women uh, that that dies with her that's what Sophia thinks is happening and then there's another side of me that, that was kind of going oh I wonder if this is just a Dr. Vantress thing because we know how horrible Arkham is as a as a state hospital as yeah. Arkham Asylum in the comics and in the games and in uh in the cartoons and everything in the movies um we know how horrible it is and having something someone like Ventress that would be there at the top going, oh, I wonder could we push this person who says that she's innocent to murder someone by putting them in various situations? Will that prove my theory that she is actually a murderer even though she's claiming that she's not? And that's another thing that's going through Sophia's head. Maybe they can push me that far. And that is kind of what happens. She does seem to be starting to be driven insane by everything that's going on around her. This inmate killing herself in front of her, the electric shock therapy that's being administered by Dr. Vantress seemingly almost every day she's going in and this is the treatment that she's getting that they're saying this is for for her uh dr rush is being pulled in to to also administer it but he starts to get the feeling that this is wrong that she's innocent yes absolutely at this point yeah yeah well and it, it transpires that then alberto visits and this is the crushing thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, for Sophia is that she's not going to even go to trial because Dr. Ventress has done a psych report which says yeah. she's effectively too uh, unstable to be able to um, to go through a trial. And you, you get that Dr. Rush tried to prevent that report being published but failed and so pulled away from Arkham mm -hmm. and effectively removed himself from being, you know, the associate uh psychiatrist at Arkham with mm -hmm. Dr. Ventress. But, you know, 
there is that moment in the electrotherapy sort of suite where she holds onto Dr. Rush's hand. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, that's just a, a visualization of the link that they have formed mm -hmm. in there, even though initially you're going, well, he is he any better than Dr. Ventress, well, yeah. really? Yeah. Um, but he, I think he does try to help Sophia. Um, I do like the kind of, you know, as she keeps repeatedly being taken into the electroshock um, therapy, you see her coming back to her cell and then pulling off the cell wall as though it's like wallpaper. Oh, it's um, again, it's kind of, you know, that just showing the breakdown of her. Mm -hmm. in, in, and I mean, in, in some sense, giving the sense of what's the reality and what isn't, as you say, yeah. you know, she thinks this is all being planned and coordinated between her father and the prison authorities, mm -hmm. you know, framing her for murder. Yeah. You know, as I say, I know you're twisting my words. I see what you're doing. But equally, is it something else? You yeah. know, is that going to be a twist later on where we see that she was being employed by her father? To, you know, that's why he was offering her the reign of the business because he knew she had the metal. But mm. I'm not saying it's... I don't know. I don't think it will go there. But yeah. do you know what I mean? It's also that distinction between truth, reality, perception yep. um, that's being shown in that moment in, in the cell. I thought it was a really good way of doing it, to it be honest. It was, yeah. It, all, it um, all peels back to her parents' bedroom as she was a kid and as she sees her mother's body hanging there. And then it's actually Sophia's body in the noose. So again, it, it's such a wonderful visual, visualization of what's actually happened here. Sophia saw her mother dead as a kid, had made the connection between what her father had done from that point onwards, killing all of these women, and her family had pinned that all back to that moment of seeing her mother dead and saying that's what turned her into the hangman. She was created as the hangman the day she saw her mother dead. That's what she's connecting back to, and now she's the one in the noose. Now she's the one stuck in Arkham. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's even to the point then where... She ultimately does become a murderer yes. from all of this because she repeatedly smacks Magpie's noggin mm. uh, against the table. Again, it's kind of not so. It's, it's life imitating murder, murder becoming life kind of thing. Mm. Um, but it's because you know she believes, as you say, she was the first person to speak to her. She was always sat next to her in the mess. Mm -hmm. um, um, that she's always been spying on. Uh, Sophia and reporting it back to Dr. Ventress, to the other officials in Arkham in order uh, to get the treat of the drug bliss that she sees Magpie taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Magpie, yeah, absolutely dead as a dodo. Uh, yeah. No pun intended. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, so farewell to Magpie once again. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. The death for the death for the character, a very minor character in the comic books, but interesting that both Gotham and uh, and Penguin have used the character. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get on to our case note number four. Back in the present day, um, as Sophia reunites with Doctor Rush, and we hear, as you kind of mentioned already, Doctor Rush left Arkham because of the treatment that they were giving to Sophia. So while he was an associate of Doctor Ventress, and Doctor Ventress was taking the lead, he was effectively being trained in that this is how things work in Arkham, and he didn't accept it, so he left. Yes, but he feels really bad about it. He feels like he left Sophia behind to go through that treatment for the rest of her time there, and he's been trying to make it up to her over the years. He says that he's been working with Alberto, and eventually the two of them working together is what got Sophia out of Arkham. Yeah, absolutely. And interestingly, it is Dr. Rush that Sophia um, calls to get rescued from yeah. the alleyway as well. So hence why then she's there in the present day. Um, but it's interesting in her breakdown, you realize why. You know, when she's breaking yeah. down what's happened to her when she's talking to Dr. Rush, she's effectively saying the entire family turned at her. Her uncle Johnny told her if she didn't get get on a plane in two days, she'd be dead. Um, she he threatened to kill her. Oz, the only person that he was, had even slightly a connection with Sophia from the previous time, and she thought was working as a partner with them, has now turned on her, and yeah. she realizes that uh, well, he's I, the one that killed Alberto. So the only person really left in all of Gotham that has any connection with Sophia is Doctor Rush. 
Yeah, that's true. But and yet she does at least, you know, in a hypothetical way, question the motives of Dr. Rush. You Mm -hmm. know, she says for 10 years, men have lied to me. I'm not the one who is broken or sick. They are. Mm -hmm. The world is. Because he talks about, you know, you need a fresh start here because, you know, she's saying she feels hemmed in. She doesn't know where Oscob is after the alleyway and the incident there. Her entire family is against her, mm-hmm. um, and she's been given a death threat by Johnny VC that she'll be killed if she's not in Italy in two days. Yeah. So she's and completely if- hemmed in, and she goes, you know, he says, well, you need to take maybe take that time for a break for yourself, yeah. I think Dr. Rush says. And that's where she's like, you know, yes, I do deserve a fresh start, and you know, ultimately it plays out in a very different way. But I like the the use of that phrase. Absolutely. I do deserve a fresh start. Yeah. I'm gonna take your um your advice, your professional advice. But there is a little bit of suddenly suspicion mm-hmm. or questioning of Dr. Rush's motives here. Well yeah. Um because of how awful she has been treated by the men, with the exception of Alberto. Mm-hmm. Um in her life, absolutely, and Alberto's dead now, so there's no, there's n- nothing else there. And uh, just to say, if we didn't say up front there about uh, what Nadia Moroni said, she said we found your drug operation and it's ours now as well. So the whole thing that Sophia had kind of pinned her hopes on that she was coming out of prison, she was going to meet up with her brother, they were going to start this drug yeah. business to rival the Falcones and take over the whole family business together. That's all gone too. So it's everything, everything yeah. that she thought she had and everybody that she thought she trusted. So no wonder she believes Dr. Rush could also have an ulterior motive here as well. So um, so yeah, there's, it's it's just a small scene, um, but I think a very important one because it sets her on the path for what happens in our final case note, case, case note number five, Sophia's payback. Yes. Um, this is fantastic. She I goes love and this. She glams herself up, gets yeah. herself a great new dress, gets an awesome new haircut, goes to the head of the table while they're all laughing and joking at it being this wonderful Falcone family. I love that she makes the speech to them going, you know, my brother, who you're all actually intend to uh, pay your respects to, um, you've all kind of forgotten that, haven't you? You've just come in and taken over the family business and pushed me out. I don't belong in this family anymore, but tomorrow I'm making a great new start for myself, basically. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is just... Like, literally chef's kiss. And, Mm. I mean, it's also just how Kristen Milioti, like, does it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that she overfills the glass of red wine. She is kind of disrespectfully sort of still filling a plate with pasta and meatballs and asking Johnny VC to pass the meatballs as Luca is trying to sort of say something. Uh But then has to ultimately interrupt Uncle Luca to make her speech Mm -hmm. you know saying we were together last time 10 years ago before i was stuffed into arkham you know convicted of murder i had a lot of time to reflect it's really quite heartfelt you know i trusted you i loved you yet you wrote letters saying i was crazy and flew in to mourn my brother who you've done nothing about again in the last episode what well it was episode two. Why are the people not hanging from the the lampposts mm-hmm. that killed my brother? Why haven't you tracked them down? Um, each time I love Johnny Vici kind of like looking at it going, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'll kill you here now almost is kind of what's being mm. written across his face. But, mm. you know, she says, I hoped it would be different, but tomorrow, you know, there will be a new beginning. And they all think she's heading off to Italy. Exactly. Um, and in the best tradition of Batman, you know, it's not like she decided she would go around in usual Italian way, maybe and slit their throats in uh-huh. their sleep. Um, yeah, for mafia, for, you know, that, that sense. Yeah, she's not leaving horses' heads in yeah, their beds. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, she decides to do a very Gotham thing, uh-huh. which is... Some poisonous gas, um, and she will gas all her family. 
With the exception, I like that because I was thinking, oh, that's her bedroom where mm-hmm. she's having the cigarette and she leaves the window open. But that yeah. is Johnny Vitti's room. Exactly. Yeah. And the other person that she doesn't gas is Mia Vitti as uh-huh. well. Um, her cousin's daughter. Her yeah. cousin's daughter. Yeah. Um, be, again, she does a whole, um, almost like it's, it's that trip down memory lane. She takes... Uh, her out to the greenhouse and have a sleepover like her and Alberto used to do Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it all you know seems quite nice and then they're all dead apart from Johnny uh, back in the house yeah and there's an interesting conversation as well when they're in the greenhouse between Sophia and Mia because Mia's obviously been warned off um, going anywhere near Sophia by her mother telling her some of the story but she's young and she asks what happened to her and she says I was sent away um, she said did you do bad things she said yes I did bad things I was fighting monsters for 10 years effectively so that's yeah. how she describes what happened to her and says to Mia I'm going to make sure you never have to fight monsters ever again so that's an added benefit let's say of killing the rest of the Falcone families they'll never be able to do what they did to her to yeah. Mia so um and again, that ties in with the first time we met me on the show um, earlier on in the season where Sophia was telling her mother, Carla, to look after her, make sure she's taken care of because you know what happens to girls in this family. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's so good. Mm-hmm. And I, I love the ending where she just picks up Johnny's uh, revolver that's uh-huh. left on the bedside table, walks around, taps his, his feet, um, and it's like, put your pants on, Johnny. We need to we talk. Need to talk, yeah. So once again, Johnny Vitti is going to have to um, work for Sophia, I guess, in some sense. Just like Oz made Johnny Vitti work for him to get uh, to get him to to si- sign them off uh, for, with the triads. Now, Sophia's killed the entirety of the Falcone family. Uh, has something to ask uh, yeah. Johnny Vitti. Um, I guess she's going to get the whole family signed over to her, and then Johnny Vitti's not going to live very long. Um, yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, it's massively interesting why she's kept Johnny around. I think of it's all be- people as well. <laughs> well, I think it's partly to do with Oz Cobb. Mm, yeah. It's because he possibly it's her thinking back to how Oz went after him in the bed when they were getting mm-hmm. him to uh, or blackmailing him effectively to yeah. support their their case uh, to the head of the triads. Mm-hmm. I mean, in that sense, you can imagine a bit of lightheartedness or jokiness from Sophia saying, well, you don't have to worry about Uncle Luca anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, or indeed, Uncle Luca's wife, because they're Even dead. Too, yeah. um, but I suspect it's because of his distrust of Oswald and maybe even though he's been horrible to her the only other person that she's seen him be maybe equally as bad or undermining to is Oz Mm -hmm. and she wants him to go after Oz yeah that could be it yeah that could be it so yeah it'd be interesting to see I cannot wait for uh, the next episode because this was I loved this yeah Yeah. really really good anything else that we haven't talked about from the episode that we should be talking about John Uh, the only thing for me is just to you know acknowledge Mark Strong uh, Mm -hmm. coming in here as Carmine Falcone love Mark Strong um, I, I really liked what he kind of did with the sunglasses, always wearing the sunglasses. Mm-hmm. But even when the young Sophia sort of went to pull them off, he kind of puts them back on again. It's like, you know, it's that notion of, you know, you look in someone's eyes, you can see their soul. It's yeah. like trying to sort of prevent people from understanding him. Yeah, I get um, that. Yeah. That, you know, his eyes would give too much away. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I thought I, that was really interesting. Yeah, and I, I wondered was it was it other wounds that he maybe had from Isabella, from his wife, when he tried to kill her? Was it, did she scratch his eyes as yeah, well as possibly, his hand or yeah. something like that? But uh, but yeah, great to see Mark Strong here replacing John Turturro, who yeah. played the role in the Batman uh, movie. He's working on other projects at the moment. But uh, if you're going to replace uh, John Turturro with another actor, Mark Strong's a very good choice. He's good in most things. Uh, he was even good in uh, the Green Lantern as Sinestro, on, except. You know, having a, a good guy <laughs> called Sinestro who turns to be a bad guy by yeah. the end. It's not, not very well written. Much better in uh, much better in Kick Ass then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Overall, John, how would you rate this episode of The Penguin? It's another one that I absolutely loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, five badass bitches out of five. Oh yeah. Um 
I loved Kristen Milioti in this. Um, she has absolutely knocked the character of S- Sophia Falcone out the park here for yeah. me. I think everything about her portrayal of this character is so good. The betrayal from Oz, from her father, from her family, Mm -hmm. the dignity and perseverance that she has, the craziness that she has, all of it. I absolutely loved that they would shove in, um, you know, effectively halfway through a, in effect, standalone episode around the backstory of Sophia Falcone because of what happened at the end of episode three and how I'm guessing it sets her against the penguin and probably to my mind one of the main reasons why she may have just kept johnny vc alive because of all her family that would have seen him as a threat it was probably johnny vc Mm -hmm. and so i really really enjoyed this um you know it was difficult tough to watch you know her sort of breakdown and her degradation at the hands of men um, in Arkham, but also at the hands of men in her family, mm-hmm. including her father. I just thought it was so, so it was such a powerful episode um, of this woman's betrayal by her family yeah. and taking her vengeance out on them um, eventually. Absolutely. There's, there's something so well written and performed about this this role yeah, it's very you know, shakespearean but, but there's also the fact that she doesn't ever feel helpless she feels put into a really horrible situation and you're you're worried for the outcome and you're concerned about how pulled apart she is and how how far she's fallen from you know the rich mansion into the yeah, yeah. state hospital but you never feel that she's helpless because of how not at all how Christine M- I mean, Milioti plays the role absolutely I, I mean that family speech there's all Mm. something Titus Andronicus yes. about it except there's no pie with um, the kids in it with me no, or something no, like exactly. that so, um, <laughs> but it is effectively Titus Andronicus without the kid pie mm-hmm. you know um, yep. and I like that because it's as powerful as that it just doesn't necessarily go to that level of revenge and mm-hmm. um, she's wanting to have revenge on men yeah and the only reason she's going to keep you around if you're a man is because you serve a purpose yes. uh, in this fresh start so i absolutely loved um i loved this episode absolutely yeah and she does also take out Carla and uh, and Luca's wife as well, but they were all involved. So uh, they yeah, all well, in, in fairness, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not just the hands of men; yeah. it's the family, exactly. you know. And how interesting is it? Here we are in episode four that we've pretty much lost the entire Falcone family, <laughs> which yeah, we yeah. knew is, is something that happens in in Gotham, and yeah. something that happens before Batman comes around, or at, you know, at some point when Batman's around, we lose all of the uh, Falcones and Maronis and they're left with just all the supervillains. So, uh, so it's interesting that this is where they've gone in episode four. Uh, great stuff. I think we deserve a drink after uh, after this episode, John. Something to steady the steady the hands. Uh, let's head on over to the Iceberg Lounge for a yes, quiz. Indeed. Uh, welcome back, fellow Gothamites, fellow quizzers, to the Iceberg Lounge quiz. We're on to our fourth question for the series. What food does Sophia Falcone use to tempt Mia into the greenhouse for the sleepover? Very good. Should have got me there too, to be honest. (laughs) Yeah, she would have got me there as well. (laughs) Excellent. Do you want to give the question one more time? Yeah. What food does Sophia Falcone use to tempt Mia into the greenhouse for the sleepover? We made it an easy one after uh, after the difficult episode, so you don't have to go in depth and you know find out how many pills were eaten or something like that <laughs> or how long the gas was on for or anything like that <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> but that is the fourth question put that together with the answers for the other questions from the series and at the end of the series email us into feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with all the correct answers and you could be in with a chance of getting your hands on some penguin goodies 
We have a final piece of feedback before we close out the show. Uh, this feedback is on this episode from Coffee and Vodka, who emailed us this morning saying, Greetings, fellow shock absorbed defenders. We wanted to know, and now we do. It's like they say in Arkham homicidal maniacs aren't born, they're created, and more deserving victims there have rarely been. They tried to create a hangman and instead got a gas man. She plays it so <laughs> convincingly and it's easy to see why when you look through her IMDb page, Kristen Milioti is a consummate character actor with one of her first roles being in The Sopranos. For a show that's called The Penguin, he did not go missed in light of her incredible performance and that ending in Fear for Little Gaia when everyone else was actually in jeopardy. Absolutely brilliant. Five mangled magpies, Indeed. exhausted guests and garden party sleepovers out of five. Please take care of coffee and vodka. Absolutely, completely agree mm-hmm. with your uh, five out of five there, coffee and vodka. Um, yes, mangled magpies indeed. I mean, you, you just you sense the venting that uh, Sophia is doing mm-hmm. when she effectively is cracking open the skull of um, magpie. Uh, but yeah, totally agree with you around how strong Kristen Milioti was here yeah. in this episode. And I, I have to say, I know it, we I know we didn't mention it, but because probably because we watched the episode twice as we usually do before we podcast. Definitely the first time I watched the episode, I saw her taking Mia outside and I was going, oh, this is the punishment for the family. She's going to kill Mia somehow. But she's not. She's taking Mia out, protecting her from what the family could do to her and then killing the rest of the family. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's a great moment. But I definitely was concerned about Mia when she was taking her outside to begin with. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that's how wonderfully she plays the the role, is that Mm -hmm. she could be on a dime a completely different. Um, It's unhinged what she what she does like there's a rationale there's a pure vengeance here and she's not the vengeance doesn't extend to people that had nothing to do with her misfortunes exactly. like mia and um, as i say even to the point where she is smart enough to keep people that were involved still alive oh, with yeah. johnny so she it's it's clever vengeance yes you know it's yeah. it's smart vengeance exactly if you want your vengeance objectives to be smart <laughs> they should be absolutely cold sophia falco <laughs> <laughs> yeah stuff. absolutely brilliant completely agree with you coffee and vodka Absolutely. Thanks, Coffee Vodka. Thanks, everybody else, for your thoughts. Thanks for joining us once again for this episode of The Penguin. We'll be back next week with episode five of The Penguin, Homecoming, uh, which will be out on HBO and now TV and Sky Atlantic next Sunday night into Monday morning. Excellent stuff. Remember, fellow Gothamites, um, to support us by sharing the podcast because, of course, sharing the podcast is sharing the love. love. It is. Yes. You can also, as well, support us over uh, on patreon.com and buymeacoffee.com as well just search tv podcast industries exactly and with that thank you so much for joining us we'll be back with some more mobster written justice uh, next week for episode five talk to you then yes uh thanks so much for joining us fellow gothamites as always and until the next episode keep watching keep listening and of course keep waddling bye bye